All right, we're going to start with grammar. I have a little frog in my throat this morning. So that's, you know, I'm sure some of you have had it too, just a little cold that's going around, um, but I'm okay. We're starting on page 67 in your grammar book. Oops, let me see if I can get this going here. There we go, come on. <laughs> Yeah, it happens to be my birthday today too. So it's it's gonna be a fun day. <laughs> Happy birthday. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Happy birthday. Thanks you guys, thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Ah, uh, you guys just made my day, that's cool. Okay, <clears throat> today we're gonna talk about homophones. And I think we've talked about this before. I'm oh, sorry, every once in a while I gotta blow my nose. So hopefully you could just ignore that. Um, a homophone is a word that sounds exactly the same as other words, but they're spelled differently and they have different meanings. So, um, and that's what it says here for the definition. Here's an example at the end of that first paragraph there, two, two, and two. They all sound exactly the same, right? Two, 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 but they're spelled differently and we know that they mean different things too. So you would use them differently in different sentences. So two, T-O, is a preposition or part of an infinitive. Here's your example, like to the left or to escape. So to the left is a preposition and to escape is infinitive. So those are the two different ways you can use that word with T-O. And then we know the word T-W-O means the number two. So two soldiers is the number two and soldiers. So we know that. And then T-O-O -O is an adverb meaning also or to ex um, excessive degree. So had had it too, like um, he had the cold too, right? Or too long, that's how I feel. I've been sick too long. I'm ready to be healthy again. So those are two different ways to use T-O-O. -O. So it says here, fix it, place a line through the incorrect homophone and write the word, the correct word above it. If the correct homophone is an adjective, write A-D-J for adjective above the corrected word. If it is a preposition, underline the prepositional phrase. Okay, those are the two ways we're going to mark it in your homework this week. So here's your example. Two, two palace guards, two palace guards ran up to the princess. So the original word they had here was wrong. It was T-O-O -O and it needed to be the number two. And remember when we look for an adjective, it answers how many? Um, so how many palace guards It's the number two. So that's an adjective. And then up to the princess, remember it's not T-O-O, -O, that would mean like also, but T-O is going to the princess. Okay. And then they underlined that prepositional phrase there. Okay. And then quotation marks and end marks. That's what we're going to talk about next. So quotation marks indicate words are spoken. So if somebody in your story is talking, um, like maybe the story about the donkey, you know, and, and <clears throat> the miller is ta talking to the crowd or the woman is talking. So we would use quotation marks around um, whatever is being said. So I want the gold in parentheses, comma, and then the attribution, that just means like who's saying it, okay? So that's what attribution is, is who's saying it. So the princess declared. The quote is the sentence in quotation marks and the attribution is the person speaking and the speaking verb. Like here it says declared or it could be yelled or it could be whispered or it could be proclaimed or something like that, describing how it's said, okay? If the quoted sentence makes a statement, place a period inside the closing question mark unless the attribution follows. So here's some quotation rules, okay? So here's your attribution like 
um, the princess said, or the princess yelled, help, we're pretending, right? Okay, so if we have the attribution first, who's speaking, you put a comma, and then you put the quote, whatever they're saying, and the period goes inside that last quote. And here's the other way, if you put the quote first, like she says, help, said the princess or yelled the princess, um, you put a comma inside there. <laughs> okay. If the quoted sentence asks a question, place a question mark inside the closing quotation mark. So here we have examples of asking a question, whoever's speaking, and then the question, it goes inside the mark or the quotation mark. And the same here, if the if what they're saying or the question they're asking comes first, you put the question mark inside and then the attribution. If the quoted sentence expresses a strong emotion with an exclamation mark, then you do the same thing as the question mark. It goes inside the quotation. So attribution, comma, quote, like Alex yelled, hey, don't take my pencil. <laughs> and then, or this way, it would be, don't take my pencil, Alex yelled. Okay, so it depends on where you put the quote, if it's before or after the attribution. Um, place the exclamation mark inside at the end of the sentence that expresses the strong emotion. So here's the example. The soldier exclaimed, the princess took it. Uh-oh, the princess took your pencil, Alex. That's not good. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and turn to the practice page. It's on page 69. 69. Okay, let's move that. Um, let's see, Cassie, could you read our sentence for us, please? The soldier observed the princess for too long. Okay, good. Good job reading. And the vocabulary word is observed. Um, Alexis, do you know what observed means? Go ahead, Alexis. He, uh, um, he watched her very closely, like, he made sure he noticed what she was doing. And it's like, if you got a job, you were, you're, and someone demonstrated stuff. Um, <coughs> well, they would demonstrate what you need to do. So they, she, he, uh, he observed what she was doing. Good, I like how you said that, especially like the first part where you said he watched closely. That's exactly right. So good job, Alexis. Go ahead and put a check mark by vocabulary at the top because we got that. Um, all right, articles are A, you guys know this really well, and the, go ahead and write those in at the top. And Wyatt, what are the two articles in this sentence? The. Yes. And the. Yes, that was easy, huh? <laughs> Good, nice job. And then Michael, let's talk about the nouns. What are the nouns in this sentence? Okay, the nouns are soldier. Okay. Princess. Princess, good. And long. That is right, good job. Because in this, in this sentence, it's too long, it's telling about an object or it's telling something about that object. So good, those are the three nouns. And it says we have one prepositional phrase. And to remember the prepositional phrases, you know, you can check in the back of your book for that little list. Does anyone know, raise your hand if you know the prepositional phrase in this sentence. Christian, go ahead, tell us what it is. For too long. Yes, good, because we know for, F-O-R, is, is the preposition, so the phrase is for too long. Very good. I know because I finished it already. Oh, you guys are quick, huh? All right. Delilah, what about the 
subject verb pair. What is the sentence? Who is the sentence talking about? Let's talk about the subject first. In the beginning. Did you say it that time? The soldier. Yes, the soldier. And then Delilah, what is the soldier doing? Uh, I don't even know what that word says. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, that is the right word. It's observed. Observed. And remember, we talked about that means like to watch closely or carefully. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the subject verb pair. Good job. And then we need a capital at the beginning. That's pretty easy. And an end mark at the end. Alex, what do we need at the end? Period. Period. And the, and the homophone is two. Okay, right here. What should it be? How should we spell it? T-O. Well, you're close. It's actually T-O-O. -O. Oh. Long. Remember, it's like exaggerated for too long. So T oh, oh, yeah. that one, there you go. All right, you guys go ahead and take a minute and rewrite that the correct way down at the bottom. Well, I was actually speaking of observing when you were telling us the thing, what twos I was observing when you said like two, two O's for too long. Like you've been sick for too long. Yes, I've been sick I for too long. <laughs> you say that. So then I know what two would be. <laughs> good. So I was That's observing good. I'm glad you picked up on that. Answer. I was waiting for you to tell me the answer. Okay. <laughs> I see somebody put something in the chat here, but I can't get to the chat. Does anybody know what the chat says? Oh, yeah. I also. It says happy birthday from Cassie. Oh, yeah, thank it said you. happy birthday. Ah, uh, you guys are making my day. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you're done writing your sentence. I see Alex. Good. Michael. Wyatt. Christian, are you done? I hold you earlier. I'm done. Okay. And Cassie and Delilah, I see yours, Alexis. Okay. I think everybody's done. All right, now we're gonna move on. And um, we're gonna, I know you guys did the story, the, um, oops, hold on. I'm on the wrong page. King Midas, you remember this story we talked about last time called King Midas? Yeah. Okay. Happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So go ahead and get out. You should have done the first paragraph of King Midas. And let's look at King Midas really quick here. Oh, I think I have it here. I'm gonna look at the original story because I know we all had a vacation. By the way, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving vacation. I didn't, I finished my, I did mine like right before it was due. Oh, okay, good. Good job. Yeah, some people may have done it early and some people might have just got it done. That's okay. Alex, do you have a question? Yeah, I didn't know if my mom already told you, but she didn't get to help me because she was sick. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people sick right now. I know that this stuff is going around, so. I it kind of mostly started with the Home Depot. Home Depot. I so had a fever. I was saying cinnamon it. stuff and got in your nose. Oh yeah, yeah. I had a fever on Thanksgiving, but it was gone when family got here. But then it came back when family was still here. Oh yeah, I had a fever too. So it's not fun. It's, I'm feeling better, but I still still hurts in my chest. So. And I play video games for an hour. So anyway, okay, so this story, I'm going to read it back to us again. I know we read this already, but just to put it fresh in our minds, because we had our big break, um, it's called King Midas. So there once lived a wealthy king named Midas, who lived in comfort and luxury, but still had a great desire for gold. Um, actually, 
I'm going to ask Alex, do you mind reading this so I could kind of save my throat a little bit? Can you pick up right here and read the rest of the story to us? <clears throat> um, his house was decorated with gold, and every day he wore fine golden jewelry. The, the king had one had but one thought, how to get more gold. Sadly, even with all the wealth he had, King Midas was not happy. The more gold he had, the more gold he wanted. Then one day, a strange visitor granted King Midas the gift of one wish. May anything I touch turn to gold, he declared. It was granted. Everything he touched did become gold. A table, a chair, the rug, even his bed. But flowers lost their color and smell. Food became in, inedible. And Midas began to worry. And, and when his beloved do little, daughter, little daughter came to give, came to give, wait, came to give, wait, no, came to. Yeah, you got it. Give him an, a hug. Okay. A statue of solid gold before his eyes. Oh, no. How deeply he regretted that horrible wish she had made. King Midas was desperate to be rid of his golden touch. He re repented? Yes, good. Repented of his greed. The strange visitor returned and had mercy on him. Wash your hands in the river, Bactolius? Yes. He ordered. King Midas raced to the river. He saw a gold he saw a gold light flowing from his hands into the water. Then he picked up a rock and remained and it re remained a rock. The gold touch was gone. To his delight, when he returned home, everything was normal again. His daughter was running and laughing, and his food was hot and tasty. From that day on, King Midas was never greedy, but always grateful for the beauty he saw in everything around him. He became a generous king, loved by all his people. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. You did a great job reading that. He could, um, okay. He could have ate his food because gold nuggets. <laughs> Are you thinking of like chicken nuggets? <laughs> gold chicken nuggets, gold nuggets. Gold chicken. Yeah, actually, you know, gold is a metal though, right? So if your food turned into a metal, mm -hmm. that would just break your teeth, I think, if you tried to bite into that. <laughs> But I that's funny. That yeah, you did? Yeah, it probably hurts your teeth. I know it would hurt my teeth. <laughs> Some people even have gold teeth. Did you know that? Like they get a cap or something and it's gold in there. I always thought it was cool. Not until I, I heard metal the teeth. Part. Yeah, I have metal teeth. Yeah, metal teeth. I have metal teeth too, but they're not gold. They're not fancy like that. But I, I have a couple caps in there. Pay some gold. Pay some gold. <laughs> gold teeth. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't think you can bite into um gold because my my um friend's uncle lost his tooth. You know, like those chocolate Snickers. Oh yeah. He put it in the freezer, or it was oh. in there, and he's like, "Mmm, Snickers." He bit into it and it popped out his tooth. Oh, that's the worst. Oh and no. He's an adult, so he lost. Oh. It. Oh, the no. best way, though, is like it's even if he him. does lose a tooth, you can just get one of his workers to carve out like a, a little tooth shape that would and then just touch it. <laughs> I know you guys are uh, funny, but either or if he if um if that knocked out his tooth, imagine gold's gonna knock out your whole entire <laughs> jaw. So you know. All right, you guys, let's get back to the story. So so your homework from before was to rewrite the first paragraph. Remember, we did the story sequence chart together, and then you guys wrote the first paragraph. Give me a thumbs up if you wrote that paragraph, the first paragraph. Good, Christian. I see yours, Michael, Wyatt. Good, Delilah. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Something a little bit different here. I want you to look at your first paragraph that you wrote for homework. And I want you to find the L-Y adverb that you put in your paragraph, and I want you to type it in the chat, okay? So go to the chat. If you know how to do that, click on the little chat bubble, and just type in the L-Y adverb that you used in your first paragraph. And Alexis, do you have a question? When 
I watched the video because I wasn't here last week. Um, I pulled up the wrong one and I did not see that. The oh, video okay. We had went over that and you sh we should have done our um, keyword outline. That's I did. okay. I know you were absent a couple of times. It's okay. You can catch up this week later. So thanks for letting me know. So I see words like sadly <laughs> and Cassie, I see only in here. Um, that's called an imposter. Have you ever heard of an imposter before? It's like, if you have an imposter, it's somebody that's like pretending to be you or something, you know, and they're saying that, let's say, uh, Michael, you know, somebody's trying to claim that they're Michael. They're like, no, I'm Michael. And Michael's like, no, you're not. I'm Michael. So an imposter is a word that actually has the L-Y in the word, but it's not really an adverb. So Cassie, um, you're, you're right in the fact that it has L-Y, but that's not an adverb. Remember, you're going to find a word that, that adds to a verb. So like sadly walking down the street or happily eating her birthday cake, which I'm going to do later today. <laughs> Or lovely, uh, actually lovely um, is another imposter. So when you guys look for your, an adverb to use, you have to think of how it would go with a verb, okay? Lovely is more of an adjective, like the lovely rainbow. That describes the rainbow. Even though it has an L-Y, it's not an adverb. So the key is to make sure that it adds to a verb. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry guys. Um, so slowly is correct. That's describing how somebody's walking. Madly, that is correct. Um, so make sure when you use those LY adverbs and you can always check your list. Remember, we have a great list to go off of and I'm gonna talk I more did. about that in a little bit. Okay, so now I want you to get out your story sequence chart that you did. It looks like this, share my screen here, because we're gonna work on the rest of that chart together. Um, let me share my screen. Oh, my doggies are probably barking at a squirrel or something. Okay, remember the story sequence chart? Go ahead and get that out. And yours should look like mine. And it has, uh, the first part is already filled out. We did that last time before Thanksgiving break. So this time we're going to keep going. Um, give me give me a thumbs up if you have this in front of you. Okay, good. Michael, you have a question? Yeah, um, I didn't do that. Oh. I don't remember doing that. Okay. Just so, showing you guys the rest of you have this one though just the first one already filled out you guys Can got that I okay good. Make it real quick yeah go ahead and work on it michael while we work on it go ahead and copy it okay um so we already have the roman numeral one here good cassie i see your thumbs up and remember we um this is different than the keyword outline <laughs> This is the story sequence chart. So that first paragraph is introducing the characters and the setting. So we're talking about who, and here we're talking about King Midas, remember? And then what is he like? He's greedy. We decided he was greedy. And then we, we kind of talked about, we didn't really address where and when yet in here, but we talked about what he was like at the beginning of the story remember he was all into his gold and he had jewelry and clothes and but he was dissatisfied because he wanted more and then he had this strange visitor come and visit and the strange visitor gave him one wish okay now we're moving on to the middle of this um story sequence chart and right here <coughs> i'm going to use my blue pen because my my black pen is not really working today so let me zoom in a little so you can hopefully see that. Oh, wait, why is it showing okay. a hand? Oh, Conflict. I think Delilah, you need to mute, please. Conflict and problem. 
is the middle part. Can you guys see that blue ink okay on my computer? Good, okay. <coughs> so the middle part is the conflict and problem. We're gonna get through this class, you guys. I'm sorry, I'm coughing and blowing my nose. I'm a mess right now. <laughs> mm. We'll get through it, okay. This is where we're gonna answer the question, what? So go ahead and skip a line and write the word what. I can't find my paper. Okay, um, you can't find the one that has this part already there? Uh, no. Is that what you're saying? Wait, were, we, were we supposed to put it like in the front of our um, thing? Yeah, it should have been in the front of your binder because yeah, that was like, your homework this last week. Yeah, I put it in there, but yeah, it should be in the front. I put it in the front. Okay. Well, what I'm going to suggest that you do is copy as much as you can. And I am recording this class. So if you don't have time to copy everything, you can go back and watch it and make sure that you have everything written down. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Cassie, do you have a question too? I put mine in the work in progress. Okay, but you found it. That's good. That's the important thing. All right. So what we're going to talk about now is what they want or need. That's the middle part of the story sequence chart. Because usually when you tell a story, this is the order of how things go. Like if you have... If you're thinking about a movie, um, let's say Kung Fu Panda, for instance, some of you have probably seen that movie. When the beginning of the movie, it talks about the character and the setting, and we learn about um, uh, Po, the panda, right? And then we start learning about all the other characters that come into the story. But the conflict is at the first, you know, the first movie that was made, Kung Fu Panda 1, he did not know how to do Kung Fu, right? So that was, and, and they wanted him to fight the bad guy, but he didn't know Kung Fu. So that was the conflict, right? And then he learned from the master. Um, what was the master's name again? The little, he was a fox, I think. Shifu. Shifu. Like a there bunny we go. or something. <clears throat> yeah. Master Shifu, yes. And then, he and then all the other characters were helping him learn kung, kung fu and he was solving that problem right and then he went to fight the bad guy and he won remember the skadoosh <laughs> with the pinky please um, don't spoil it oh you haven't seen it yet no. <laughs> oh okay that's the oh, first okay. episode that's the it's first very, movie that was like forever ago when they made that one sorry alex i thought you've seen it so i won't tell you I what just watched, like, the, the shows i ha i never watched the movie so <laughs> that <doesn't> happened <laughs> oh <laughs> okay well i won't tell you how it ends but anyway what i'm trying to say is even movies and books they all have a, a like a sequence to the story so usually we hear about the characters first and then then there's the problem and we're answering this question, what? What is it that the character wants or needs? And then over here, I know this is gonna be a little different for you, but go ahead and write, think. What does the character think? And then go ahead and copy this down too. What does the character say? And then, what does the character do? So you're gonna see, I'm gonna draw lines to each one of these things, okay? You're answering the question, what? <laughs> see, Delilah's got, she's coming back in. What does he do? He got, he be greedy. Yeah, well, in our story, we're gonna talk about that. Well, he was, that was part of his personality, right? That's how he, he was greedy in the beginning, but then, Remember, the stranger comes along and he says, um, I'm going to grant you one wish. Do you remember what the wish was that he, King Midas wanted to get? Um, Cassie, what was the wish? Everything he touched turned into gold. 
Yes. So what right here next to the Roman numeral two, you're going to put, let's put whatever touch gold. Whatever he touched turned to gold. Whatever touched gold. So you're right. That's what he wished for. That's what he did, right? So what are some things that he touched that turned to gold? What are some things that in the beginning of the story that he actually touched that turned to gold, Alex? <clears throat> um, he touched his food, his bed, the flowers, and his daughter gave him a hug, and then she turned to gold, and then, yeah. Okay, so his table, we'll put table here. And by the way, remember when we do these outlines, we can use symbols um, for free. Remember that? So he was happy about that. I'm going to put a little happy face next to table because he was happy to have a gold table. That was pretty special. And then another thing he touched was his chairs. His chairs turned to gold. And then remember his bed, his bed turned to gold, but do you think he was happy about that one? I don't know, maybe because if it was like the bed frame, you know, when the mattress sits in, that would be cool to have a gold bed. But I think he just bed wants, frame, a, maybe he wants a back cracker. That would <laughs> back cracker. be really uncomfortable. I would think, especially like where I live at night right now, it's in the twenties up here. And I'm thinking if I lay down on a cold golden bed, that was hard. I don't think I could sleep on that. That would be totally awful. Right. Cause I, it would be cold. Metal gets cold when it's cold outside. So I'm, I'm quite since I'm actually very good with uncomfortable spots. <laughs> if the sheets would be gold, then they would harden, and then they're spied. If you had to sleep, you would have. That to would be awful. <laughs> maybe, maybe like, maybe like there, it's like twenty-four karat gold. When he touches the blanket, it's still a blanket, but it's covered in twenty-four karat gold. Yeah, but gold like is hard like though, so it would not not be comfortable to have it actually you know, a hard gold blanket on top of you. So I'm not going to put a smiley face. Somebody needs to mute. It might be you, Alexis. I'm hearing some background so sounds. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go on to the next part now. Remember, okay, let's keep thought, talking about what else turned to gold other than his table, chairs, and bed. What else turned to gold? Um after that, you can look back on the story if you need to. But Alexis, what else turned to gold? His daughter. His daughter. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But before his daughter, because that was the part that changed everything, right? But his food. The flowers. Oh, yeah. And the flowers. Okay, I'm going to put food here. Do you think he was happy when his food turned to gold? Probably not. He probably, probably like he probably grabbed it and then just took a bite out of it. So I'm gonna put a sad face here because I don't think he liked having his food turn to gold because he couldn't eat it. And then remember the water also turned to gold. Or yeah, and he was not, not too happy gold. about that. It washed out the gold. That was later though, right? Didn't he? Let's see. Let me look back here. Um. <laughs> That's what got rid of the curse. Later, you're right. He didn't turn the river into a gold mine. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and turn it into flowing gold. That would make no sense. Okay, let's let's change that. Let's put, sorry, if you're using pen, just draw a line through it. But the flowers turned to gold. But he didn't really like that either, you know, because the flowers lost their color, remember? And their smell. Okay, so I'm just going to use those two words for that part. And then you're right. I think it was Alexis that said his beloved daughter turned to gold. And that was when he was really sad, right? 
And I'm going to put a little heart here for beloved. Beloved just means that he loved his daughter, right? And then let's put the word daughter here. And then he cried. And I'm going to put in quotes. No. When his daughter turned to gold, he cried, no, not my daughter. Okay, so actually in the original story, he doesn't actually say that. So I kind of added that detail here just because I'm sure that's what he did. If this was a true story, obviously it's a, it's a made up story, but if he really did, he would be like, no, not my daughter. So I did add that little detail. Um, and you can do that in your story sequence chart, by the way. That's okay to add little information that wasn't originally there. All right. Now, for this last square down here on the left side, um, this is the part where there's a climax. Okay. And a climax in a story, go ahead and write that word. It, I want you to squeeze in two words here. So climax slash resolution. The climax of a story is where I'm, it's like- I'm still working on the, second, on the second one. Okay, just keep writing while I'm talking. It's okay. So a climax is like the point of the story or the movie or the book or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, um, the climax is the point where you don't know if- things are gonna get better or if things are gonna get worse, right? Like remember in Kung Fu Panda, those of you that have seen it, he learns Kung Fu, but now, he's, now he has to fight that bad guy and he's having a hard time and it almost seems like the bad guy's gonna win, right? That's the climax of that movie. You don't know if Poe is gonna be strong enough to beat the bad guy or if the bad guy is going to win, because the bad guy is really, really strong. He was like powerful, right? So that's the climax. In this story, he's now King Midas, his daughter, turned to gold. And you're thinking, did he lose his daughter forever? Is this going to be the end? What's going to happen next? So that is called the climax of the story, okay? And then the resolution is another way of saying how does it get resolved? Like what happens in the end? And it's a good thing that this story has a happy ending because I know we've done stories in the past um, that didn't have such a happy ending, right? But this one actually does. So that's the good thing about this story. Okay. After the king's daughter turned to gold and he's upset and he cries, no, um, how does he feel now about what he wished for? How does he feel now? Now that he sees his daughter turn to gold and he sees his daughter, what do you think he feels now after making that wish that everything he would touch would turn to gold? Alexis, what do you think? He feels bad. He feels bad, okay. What's another word we could use? That one, that would be a little more descriptive. Uh, Michael. Sorrowful. Sorrowful. I was thinking of the word regret. Have you ever heard that word regret before? Y'all regret this. Yeah, yes. you'll regret this. Regret is when you do something that you wish you didn't do, like you wish you hadn't done. Like um, maybe you decided to run down a hill because it looked like it was really fun to run down that, a steep hill and you were like, I'm going to go so fast. This will be awesome. Well, halfway down the hill, you trip over a rock and then you start falling and tumbling and you hit your head and everything's you know hurting. And you're like, man, I regret running down that hill. That probably was not a good idea. Actually, I did run down the hill, a steep one. There were lots of rocks. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Was but sometimes if you get hurt, then you look back and you go, man, that was not a good idea, right? And so, going up the hill was tiring. <laughs> yes. Oops. Okay, hold on. Some yeah. people literally said, some people say when they do that, when the first person gets hurt, they say, I regret this. I yes. regret nothing. <laughs> I might right. need to go to the car, like leave or something. 
<laughs> right now? Uh, you need to go? Well, hold on. Let me ask my mom. All right. So I put the word extreme here because it wasn't just like I regret running down the hill. It was like, oh, my gosh, my daughter is now a statue. Um, I regret making that wish because I want my daughter back, right? So I put extreme regret. And then do you know what the word repent means? Have you ever heard of repent before? Repented. Okay, repent. Um, good, I see a couple hands there. Means that he decided he feels bad about it. And he, and he, he decides, you know what? Being greedy is not worth it. Because remember in the beginning, he was so greedy, he had everything gold already. And then he wanted everything to be gold. He wanted more and more and more and more and more gold. And now he lost his daughter. And now he's like, okay, I need to think about my life and I need to make sure that I don't lose my daughter, right? So let's put the word repent or repented. And repented just means he changed his ways right? He decided having all that gold is not at all it's cracked up to be, especially when he can't eat his food, he can't smell the flowers, and then especially when he lost his daughter to, you know, he, she turned into a statue. He can still smell the flowers as long as he doesn't touch them. Right, but what <laughs> happened was he touched them, and then they turned to gold, and then he couldn't smell them anymore. All right, so at this point of the story, who comes back? Who's the character that comes back now that he's regretting the, the what daughter. he did? No, Michael, who comes back into the story at this point? Uh, is it the stranger? Yes, good. So the mysterious, remember the mysterious visitor. He comes back. And what does he tell King Midas to do? What does he tell? What is this mysterious visitor? To wash tell? his hands in the in the river. Good. So I'm going to put wash. I put a little colon here, and I'm just going to put wash. And then. What does King Midas do? What what was the name of the river, first of all? Do you remember that? You can look back on the story if you need to. The river Pactolius? Pactolus? Good. Okay, good. So let's put river Pactolus, I think is how you say it, Pactolus. And then the gold, what happened to the gold touch that he had? It washed away. It washed away. So I'm going to put some waves right here, like water waves, because remember, we can do symbols for free. So I'm putting little waves here. It is his golden touch washed away. By the way, I want you to add something over here on this side, too. I want you to add how solved, because... We're talking about how his problem was he was greedy and then everything and then he got his <laughs> wish and everything turned to gold and then how it was solved this this stranger came back and then he said okay now go to this river wash your hands and then the the magic will be gone right so what happened after um he washed his hands in the river Everything turned back to normal. Good. So put normal here. Everything turned back to normal. And he had his daughter back, right? I'm going to put another heart here. And he had his daughter back. And then I'm going to add one more detail here. So we're going to add a number four to this list if you have space here. And then I'm going to put KM, that's a symbol, KM stands for King Midas, remember? He decided he wasn't greedy anymore. See, this is a, this is a, um, 
what we learned, I want you to add this word, um, lesson learned here, because that's another thing that we can get. I know I'm adding a lot to this chart, so just take your time and copy it exactly like how I have it on mine. So he learned a lesson and he decided he wasn't greedy anymore in the end, right? Um, so Cassie, do you have a question? Basically, can't you say that he was grateful at the end for everything? Yes. Yes. Good. Grateful. And then there's another word that they used at the end. Thinking of another word, it starts with a G. It's in the last sentence, if you can find it. No longer, no longer greedy. Generous? No longer greedy. Generous. There it is. Generous. Generous. And do you know what generous means? Christian, do you know what generous means? Like he's happy what he has with you. What he yes, has. that's part of it. But it also means like giving to people. Like if you're generous, you give either, a, let's say you're with your friend and your friend is cold and you have a jacket on and you're going to give your friend your jacket because you want your friend to be warm. That's being generous, right? You're giving your friend something. So rather than not being happy and wanting things to be different, he was now happy and grateful, but he also was generous. He gave away things and he was nice to people and he just completely changed his whole look on life. So I would give um, my sweater to my friend because my mom forces me when I go outside and it's cold mm -hmm. to my sweater and I'm usually not cold. So I give it to my friend and I wouldn't be cold at all. Even if I was in shorts, even shorts. That's nice. That's being very, very generous. Okay, so I see people still writing. That's okay, I'm gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna keep talking. Go ahead and make sure to copy all this down. And this week, you're going to write the rest of the story. So you should have already done the first paragraph. And now you're going to use the same paper where you have your first paragraph. And now you're going to write the second and third paragraph. You're going to finish the story using this outline right here. Okay. And remember how we look at those key words. And then we think of a sentence and then you put your sentence down on your paper. So your story is going to be three paragraphs all together. Okay. And then I also want you to look in your binder. I'm adding a guy named Silverman. He's the stranger. <laughs> He takes off his cloak, silver man. He, when he touches stuff, it turns to silver. Oh, yeah. So they, they <laughs> good one. Fight. Okay, I want you to get out page 51 in your binder. It looks like this. It's the checklist. Let me zoom out a little bit. It's the checklist for King Midas. You see that at the top there? It's page 51. 51. And then I want I you to, it. you got it? Okay. So as you're writing the rest of your paragraphs, you're going to use this little checklist here. Okay. And it says, like the first one says, your name and date in the upper left-hand corner. We always do that when we start our paper. Yours should already be there because you already wrote the first paragraph. So you should already have that. And remember, this one says composition double-spaced. That means you're going to skip a line when you write your story. Skip lines. Then, do you remember back when we talked about the title rules? and how you use words from your last sentence in your title, one to three words. This is a little reminder here. It says one to three key words from your final sentence is gonna be in your title. 
story follows story sequence chart. That's what we made today, your story sequence chart. Each paragraph contains at least four sentences. So check that. And then when you see that you have four sentences in each one of your paragraphs, you could put a little check mark right there inside that box, okay? And then this, this one right here, you don't have to worry about that because you're turning it in on Google Classroom. So you don't have to worry about putting the checklist on top and the final draft and the rough draft. Don't worry about all that, okay? But here, this part where it says style in the middle, you're do, gonna do two things, your LY adverb and your who, which clause, one of each in each paragraph. And when see how it says, that symbol right there means paragraph. So that's paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. If you have an LY adverb in each paragraph, you can put check marks in those little boxes. This is just to help you remember, okay, guys? And then at the very bottom, capitalization, in marks and punctuation, complete sentences, does it make sense? And then checking your spelling. Now, this is when you give it to your editor which is more than likely your mom or your grandma or somebody that does your schooling or somebody older than you in your house, whoever your editor is, you want to have them check it before you turn it in on Google Classroom. Okay. So you're going to finish writing paragraph two and three, and then you're going to do your, your grammar homework. You guys have any questions about your homework this week? Any questions about what you're gonna do for homework? Okay. All right, let me check the time here. Oh, we did it. Wow, it's like right on time. Okay, so next week is regular classes. We're still doing, um, I know Michael usually sees me on Thursday. So Michael will have your class normally on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody else, I'll see you next Tuesday. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll Bye. See you happy time. Oh, and one more time, happy birthday. Thank Bye. you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. See all that in the happy chat. Birthday. That's so cute. Yes. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Bye. 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 See you next week.